Hello, my name is Sandra Timko and welcome to Lumen Christi. Most of us remember just a few years back when the economy took a tremendous dive, all the changes that it had really um, impeded on all of our lives. Many people lost homes, jobs, um, relationships, um, dreams. In the process of all of that, a very close friend of mine, Rick Rosen, who happens to be the Vice President of Lumen Christi, a wonderful man who had a real heart for the losses that people took, discovered the heart behind the losses. And after some great inspiration from the Holy Spirit, he was led to begin a program called Fresh Start Homeowners. We've done one segment on this wonderful, wonderful um, opportunity for people to get replanted into new homes and new lives some time ago. Well, Rick told me recently that there was a couple, Mary and Andrew Langben, who suffered through the losses, like many, and were willing to share their story about new life that came through his program. So I would like you, my brothers and sisters, to meet my new friends in Christ, Mary <laughs> and Andrew Langben. Mary, I'm so happy that you came. Andrew, I appreciate that you took the time to be with your wife today to share your story. First of all, I'd like to ask you um, where you were living before the bottom fell out. Um, well, we, we had a home in Roseville, and uh, we had been there, I think it was about eight or nine years. And, um, you know, we, we were pretty happy there. It was starting to get a little bit, you know, uh, tight. Our family was growing, um, but we were, we were pretty happy with our situation. His work was going well, and um, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. How I, many we, children do you have? Um, we have six. Uh, oh, six children. So right. you're in this little bungalow in it, Roseville? It was a little, a little ranch on a slab. Okay. We had four and, um, at the time. Yeah, we had four children. We had four yeah. at the time, and um, we had uh, built up some credit card debt over the years. Um, you know, when we f when we first bought our house, we sort of uh, you know would we went shopping for furniture and would take advantage of the zero percent for a year. And, you know, pay the minimum payments, and we we kind of were young and not really um, budget minded. But bu yeah. budget minded, and we were we problem. were not um, you know very. I guess very fiscal, <laughs> so we we didn't really understand the ramifications of some of the things we were doing. Um, were you? Did you consider yourself living lavishly? No. How about just over your means? means? A little bit over our means, yeah. Okay. And were you working any overtime or anything that would constitute you feeling the freedom to spend more? Um, it did have a little bit, yeah. Yeah, he had he had some overtime, um, but we were. You know, at, I don't at, even at know at what point, point we kind of got caught out, in this. We were trying to keep it under control by well, then. Well, there there was a point where we could tell, okay, so. this is getting out of control. You know, the, the credit card debt kind of just s sort of racked up. And um, so at that point, we started just trying to pay the credit card um, bills down. So we were throwing any extra money we had into the credit cards without, again, not we were not very educated <laughs> in terms of money and instead of making sure that we had some savings built up and sort of balance things out we were throwing everything into the credit cards so were you both working no no, no. so what what did you do what was your line of work um i'm actually i was a test technician uh, for automotive so that was pretty solid mm -hmm. but then yeah, what they started cutting cool. hours or did you just get <clears throat> hacked um, they had gone through a couple layoffs already by the time I got laid off. And how many years did you have in there? About uh, five. Okay, I just experienced yesterday <coughs> where I work mm -hmm. the sadness of a large number of people coming to their last day. The general tenor and the oppression that was there in sadness um, as they walked out and of course, leaving family and friends, that's what your co-workers become, but um, the uncertainty of what was lying ahead. How did you feel the day that you were told goodbye? Um, very numb, very numb feeling. Did it come as a shock? Yeah. 
Well, how did it happen? Because for people that have never experienced that or seen someone in a close proximity that's gone through it, tell them what you experienced. Um, well, my manager came. He said, hey, I need, I need to talk to you. I'm like, well, just a minute. I'm finishing something. He said, no, I need to talk to you right now. And then I just kind of knew. So I kind of put it down and, and it's, uh, you know, feeling just kind of washes over you. You just know what's happening. So when you handed in your time card, did they take away anything for security measures and so on? Um, anything that I had that belonged to the company, obviously I had to give them. So a, a phone and you know a security badge. And stuff but you like that. you were not aware that this was even going to happen until that moment. Um, I knew that it probably could. I didn't think it would, because we had, they had already laid off so many people there. And was your job a specialty job so that you kind of felt you were secure? Um, to a certain degree, yeah. So on your way home, you're driving home, you're numb. Had you already called her? I didn't call her until I was about halfway home because I knew she would take it really hard. If I walked in the door and told her, then she would be <laughs> even more shocked. So I was trying to that time it. was home. <laughs> so, so from the time you lose your job and the time you get another job, how long is that? Uh, six months. Okay. And from the time you lost your job and to the time you lost your house, how long was that? <laughs> that actually took, um, took about a couple years. Year. Well, yeah. Yeah. A couple years, I think. Okay, so your next job, is that where you are currently? Or did you go from several jobs? I went to a several. couple jobs. Okay, so this one feels secure now. You've been there how long? Um, I've been there another about two years, year and a half. Okay, let's let's talk about before we talk about the, the the trauma of saying goodbye to your home, packing up your belongings, your children leaving their friends, and all of that that comes with that. When you got home and you told her, I mean, I imagine you're washed with um, fear. Yeah, I still remember the exact moment he actually texted me before he came home because, like he said, he knew it would be a shock to walk through the door that time of day. He would never be home that time of day. So, um, yeah, it was devastating, absolutely devastating. I don't think people that have ever experienced this understand how the bottom falls off. Yeah. All of a sudden, your life is right. altered, and right. you don't know how long it's going to take. It takes a few weeks to even set in mm -hmm. what happened. You know, he, you wake up the next morning, and he's Beside still you. in bed, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And mm, some advantages to well, this. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's so out, you know, mm -hmm. so out of character. normal yeah. and care. Yeah. Did you feel, um, and I know this is just a normal thing, anytime we experience losses, do we think, um, gee, could I have done something different? Or did I do something wrong? Am I being punished? Did you <laughs> go through that? Because we know as we grow in our Christianity, it has nothing to do with that. It mm -hmm. has to do with him stretching us and us trusting him more. But what right. did you experience right. in that uh, Yeah, I was trying to avoid that feeling, but eventually you get to the point where you haven't found a job after five or six months, and you're like, am I doing enough? Am I trying hard enough? Why am I not getting a job? And now, how did you manage for those months? Was um, uh, unemployment? unemployment? Unemployment, we were still, then, um, you know, keeping up on all of our bills. You know, because we felt once you make a commitment to anything, whether it was the credit card, you know, we made sure that we found money. I, I got a part-time job and was taking any sewing jobs I could, and his new full-time job was looking for a job. Mm -hmm. So um, so we managed, you know, we didn't have much in savings to begin with, um, but we managed to pull things together enough. Now, again, another element of great losses in our life that many people that have been blessed and fortunate that they've never experienced it. Mm -hmm. um, the toll that it takes on our relationship, mm -hmm. the toll that it takes on our health, our children's well-being. Would you share with us if you noticed that there was um, tension mounting between you? Or, uh, did you? or did you get stronger in each other? There were definitely times where there was tension um, after a few months, uh, like he said, it just felt like, you know, why, why hasn't he found something yet? You know, he, he went on numerous interviews, even all across the state. We were 
contemplating moving out of state if if he could find something out of state. Um, but we were, you know, definitely brought closer together as well. <laughs> so there was a little bit of both. Did you ever feel like you were going to slide into despair or depression? Um, yeah, in fact, I felt like I was going there by the time I, about, right about the time I got the job, I felt right. I was starting to slip that way. Okay, now, your faith walk at this point, you're pulling together. Mm -hmm. You're going to church. Mm -hmm. You're Catholic. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you decided to ask the help of St. Joseph. Right. And for our non-Catholic brothers and sisters, everyone's aware who St. Joseph <laughs> is. He's the one with the lily and Jesus <laughs> in his hand. He was the foster father, of course, of Jesus here on earth. But he is the patron mm -hmm. of employees and employers. Mm -hmm. And so you turn to him. And, of course, we know Scripture says no one comes to the Father except through the Son. But to clarify, you were asking intercession from he mm -hmm. to go on your behalf to Jesus to go to the Father. Right. So you're talking to St. Joseph. You do the... Many, the, many times. Mm -hmm. As soon as he got laid off, we started. So for, for months, we were doing the St. Joseph Novena. Um, and now I'm, you know, at the time, I was desperately begging. You know, we were desperately begging for a job. But I think, really, it's a prayer of guidance, you know, that... Um, we're guided to the right place in life. Obviously, that should include a job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it took a very, you know, it felt at the time a very long time. You know, lots and lots of praying and trying, trying to hold on and get some strength from that. So, so you get to the place where you get the news, you've fallen behind several months in a house payment. Well, how that happened actually was we were trying to work with the bank since we hadn't been late before. And... Um, in following the bank's protocol, we even though we were still paying, we were still marked late, late, late for many, 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 many months. And that eventually obliterated our credit. And we had those credit cards. So the interest on those things went through the roof. And um, yeah, eventually everything just came tumbling down. We just, you know, he had eventually found a, a temporary job um, after six months, tempor temporary contract, but it was much less than what he had been making, but it was a job. And it did lead to great opportunities. Um, but we just could not hold everything together anymore. As, you know, as, just, a, as a man, we, now I, can, I, can, I can feel and hear and see that this is still so fresh for you. The hurt and the losses are just monumental. But as a man, when you realized that it was, you had no choice anymore, the house Mm -hmm. was a thing of the past. When you had to start packing up your family, the day you locked that door, had to hand the keys back, what were you feeling? <laughs> oh. It's, <laughs> it's, it's like everything you've been trying to work for for the past, you know, eight or ten years. It's just, here it is, you know, start over. So and where were you moving to at that point? Um... My grandma offered to rent her house for a little while until she sold it. So we did that for about nine months, something like that. And in the meantime, <clears throat> you're all in this house. How are your kids holding up? Is it Good. in the same area? It was near the same it area. It was close. And um, yeah, at that time, it was going okay. And we had actually been hoping to maybe like, purchase the house, that, but um, that, you know, land contract or something but that didn't quite work out the way we were expecting no. and then we found another um house to rent with a great catholic landlord i don't know how we keep falling you know mm -hmm. f falling into this protection <laughs> and he he because embraced you, our family <laughs> because you ask mm -hmm. we have not because we ask not right. you were asking mm -hmm. you were you were begging right and um so we just absolutely fell in love with this house and he had it for sale and we had um, talked to him about maybe we could rent for a few years and do a rent to own which he agreed to and um, we we became very comfortable there and uh, when it came time we had been there a few years and we didn't quite understand the ramifications of everything that had happened in the past we had been getting some advice that 
um, you should be good to go a little, you know, year, year and a half, you should be good to go. Oh, so they were making yeah. you believe that everything <laughs> was right. going to be like brand new? Well, that we could possibly get a mortgage, we'd have higher interest rates, but it it's gonna be something good to would go. work. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when it came uh, that our lease was up and we were starting to look around for mortgages, we were pretty much getting laughed at, <laughs> you know, when I would make calls to the bank. Um, and, and then the realization of what the ramifications of this. Huge. Uh, yes. <laughs> Let me ask you something. When, when she would tell you, well, I followed the bank and they're, they're pretty much laughing right. at me. How did that make you feel as a man? Did, uh, did you go through that thing of failure, feeling failure? No, it's just like, well, why didn't they tell us this up front? Mm -hmm. You know, they, they tell you it's going to be a year, and now it's, they're saying it's three to four. And, and that's a long time. Well, how it? am I supposed right. to plan for that now? Yeah. Right. You know? Yeah. And um, so we had gotten into the, the point where, you know, we, we had a, a very good rapport with our landlord, and he, he was great. Um, but we understood that that was not his original plan. You know, he he had originally wanted to sell the house, and here we ha we were years off still. And so we started looking around for rental houses, um, and had it, it was near impossible <laughs> to find a rental house. And the reason we kept getting was because of the number of children, which I can understand. <laughs> I'm not going to knock anybody. You know, mm -hmm. their property. They're, you know, and we're the ones looking, you know, and looking for. you have for how many by this time? Six. 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 Okay. I came from a family of seven kids. So okay. I get it. <laughs> yeah. So, so even to the point where we would get approved on a house, but then when we would go sign the paperwork, we would find out that they had added an extra deposit per month per child <laughs> to the lease. No. Wow. Yeah. So we were just, you know, reeling. We, we just really didn't know. What to do? Our landlord had let us go month to month until we figured something out, which was wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, but we both kind of came to the realization that we um, we couldn't get a mortgage, and we were having a really hard time renting. Um, in fact, we could we <laughs> really couldn't, couldn't find, find any rental. anything. Most of the people would kind of cut me off on the phone before <laughs> we even got any further. Well, before we. Um, go further and mm -hmm. introduce this whole wonderful blessing that came to you. Right. I want to take a moment and reintroduce our guests. We're speaking today with Mary and Andrew Langben, and they are sharing with us the devastation that um, life, life, the situation in life brought um, kind of a chaotic spin into their mm -hmm. family. Um, the economic downturn some years ago, most of us uh, did not walk out scrape free. Everybody took some kind of hit one way or another and their hit was the loss of their house and the realization of um, all of the ramifications that come from that. It wasn't just moving from a building, right. transporting children right. to a new location. It's the ramification that follows you after you've suffered this way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're renting this house. You know that they can't be a long-term situation right. because you got six kids and there's gonna be a cost for that. Right. And um, you need a home. You need right. to have a home for your family. Right. So how did you meet Rick <laughs> Rosen? <laughs> well, what we did was we um, decided to move into my parents' house again. Um, and they graciously opened their doors. We were in a tight spot, and um, we sort of didn't know what to do. We put our trust yeah. in God that something would work out. We were sort of thinking we would buy one of those really run-down foreclosures, you see, mm -hmm. and sort of either live at my parents' while we renovate or something. Mm -hmm. um, but we that was pretty much the extent of our plans. We were still very grateful. Andy had a job, you know, still has a job and everything in that sense was going well. And I um, happened to find um, the novena to Our Lady Undoer of Knots. Mm -hmm, that's a good one. <laughs> right, and I hadn't heard of her before. Mm -hmm. And I um, saw that she was uh, special in the heart of Pope Francis. And um, so I began that novena, and that novena itself just I mean, every day just touched a certain part of your heart, 
you know. Um, I want to I want to interrupt you for a moment. Right. Again, for our non-Catholic brothers and sisters, novena, a series of prayers mm -hmm. for a concentrated need. And again, we all know that no one comes to the Father except through the Son. This is not a form of idolatry. Our loved ones that have gone before us, especially people who've lived extremely righteous lives, we have every reason to believe they're with Christ in heaven. Um, they would be praying for us here as we would be praying for them. And the reality is, in a novena, your concentrated efforts on those prayers when the needs are so great, mm -hmm. it's almost like during the time that you do it, everything stops, mm -hmm. right? And all that effort is there. Our Lady of the Undoer of Knots, um, I have a friend who has a great devotion to that. She, that's a long prayer, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's actually for rectifying relationships. There's a lot of that involved in that. Right. Um, but it's a lengthy prayer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would take her 45 minutes to an hour a day to do this series of prayers. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, no, you can't be, you have to be <laughs> kidding. We are at five minutes till the end of this program. That can't be. We're gonna have to do a second segment <coughs> because you have to tell us quickly okay. how, she, how she came and Well, interceded. we were in a knot, mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Um, we actually found an ad on Craigslist, and I do not trust Craigslist <laughs> for these kind of things, but I was just looking. And in, our, in my investigation of what this program was, who, who ran it, who, you know, what are they affiliated with, I found um, the program Lumen Christi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and just even your introduction, um, the people you you know father Hardin and the, the people you have in your introduction scenes just um really just hit me I, and i just sort of realized what was what was happening <laughs> and um immediately felt a lot more trust <laughs> you know that this was so you contact rick right and he does what um well he sat down with us and we had originally thought you know we'd get in we weren't sure what was going to happen because we've been turned down so many times on other things. Um, but he looked over, you know, our financial records and everything, and he set a good plan in front of us <laughs> and um, gave, gave us a, you know, an estimated date on when we could attain a more obtain a mortgage. And um, just in his office, I just you know, became emotional re at realizing what was in front of us and that this, the name Fresh Start, I mean, that is exactly what this is. It just feels like a whole new life for us. Now, how long between the time you met Rick and you were unlocking the front door? Um, let's see, it was it's a couple of months. June, July, August, September, about four or five months. Now yeah. that house you're currently renting, but it's with the option to buy. Right. Mm -hmm. And you have like a year to make that happen? Uh, it's a, a land contract and I think we have about two years before we can obtain a mortgage, so. And all of your needs are met there, adequate bedrooms, beautifully yes. mm -hmm. decorated. It, it was so much more than we c ever expected. Yeah, <laughs> so you would so recommend anybody in this situation? Absolutely, without a doubt. And where is it's your house? What city are you in? Waterford. Okay, and it has all of your needs met? Absolutely. And yes. if somebody personally is watching this, they're going through this, or they know somebody that is, would you share your phone number? Abs yeah. Okay, absolutely. give us your phone number. 586-883-4105. And if there was a couple that was just in anguish because they're going through this, and they wanted to sit down and talk with you guys because they are curious about Rick's program, would mm -hmm. you be willing to have someone sit with you and talk with you about all of this? Absolutely. So there's no pride issues. You're ready to share <laughs> and give the glory to God? Absolutely. <laughs> Can I ask you this? The, bed, the amount of bedrooms, how big is the house? The house is 1,800 square feet, which is much bigger than anything we thought we would find. So right. in other words, what the so locust has eaten, he's given back to you even greater. A a a yes. Yes. <laughs> and and it's, it's so close to his work and he's at a point in his career where he's, you know, needing to be at work a lot, you know, so it's, it feels like we ended up exactly where we were supposed to be, you know, it's all incredible. along. Right. It's so incredible. It's I can't even <laughs> explain <laughs> to you. And you have a bigger yard, nicer neighborhood. Yeah. And new friends. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, tell us the phone number once more. Okay, it's 586-883-4105. And just in closing, I want to thank you so much. Oh, I, thank you. Yeah, I thank really you. appreciate this because I know so many people that are right on that thread of, mm -hmm. of um, staring at the possibility of huge losses. And you are a great testimony. You hang in there. You, you cling together in Christ, and he has something greater right? <laughs> it's all about trust and surrender. Absolutely. And I just want to uh, thank Mary and Andrew again, and I do encourage anybody that's in this situation or knows somebody that is, give them a call or call Rick Rosen at the Fresh Start Homeowners uh, Program. You can go on our website or professionalsforlife.org um, and uh, get the information you need. And as always, remember to let Christ's light shine through you. Sin